Uh oh, you guys disappeared for a second. Um, can you still hear me? Yep, we're good. Can you hear us? Yeah. What happened there? I uh, started recording the video. <laughs> oh, okay. No worries. Yeah. No worries. So anyway, you know, I'm just going to exit out of that. We're good. Okay. So what happened was, uh, and you probably remember the the part in the movie where we're at the conference and that 12 year old kid walks up to the microphone and he's, and he's asking me questions. Yeah. Uh -huh. And well, <laughs> uh, he, the director was not really fond of that. And it's like, Oh, it's all fun and games until the kids are involved. You know, think of the children. <laughs> and he wasn't alone there. National Geographic took the same stance and some really big YouTube channels, including of uh, the hypocrisy. Logan Paul, right? Who's, oh. Whose demographic is eighth grade boys. <laughs> Even he was going, hey, they shouldn't be doing this flat earth thing to kids. I'm going, you, you're, that's all you do is, is teach kids things. Bad things, by the way. And you're, you're judging. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, hey, sorry. That I, I rant and I ramble. Please, yeah, we we liked it. We we really enjoyed the the fact the yeah. rawness that you showed in your relationship with um, gosh, what was her name? Uh, the red haired girl, <laughs> Patricia okay. Steer. Yes, can that's we just it. get emotional for a second? Because cool. I bring, I don't know. You watched our our last video. Yes, so Seth, I watched it all the way. Yeah, Seth brings all of the like seriousness, the knowledge, the questions, and I just bring the like ha. Ah! <laughs> oh yeah, like, very emotional. Um, so I will say, I told Seth, I'm like, they need to be together. They need to like, there's like, <laughs> there is chemistry there. There is something there. Yeah, she did say that. Thank, thank you for that. There is there is some chemistry there. We knew that uh, the first week that we started doing a podcast type thing, and but but other people noticed it more than we did. What we didn't know was because behind the scenes, we would be talking on Skype because she lives down in Houston and I'm up here in Seattle. Uh, we would be on Skype for hours and hours and hours. And then all of a sudden we realized it's like, wait a minute. Why are we why are we doing this privately? Why don't we just do a, a thing? Because we're wasting production value here. Yeah, because uh, we, we realized that we were just just rolling. It, was, it turned cyclical and it was like a like a turbine. And uh, so, yeah, it's it's been a lot of fun and we see each other now and again on, on public events. I don't know. You know, people ask me that at the film festivals. People are saying, what about you and Patricia? I'm going, I don't know. <laughs> we'll have to see. Honestly, Flair is I'm, I'm rooting for you guys. Well, like the you. whole documentary, I was like, they need to be together. They're totally crushing on each other. And that's so like, Brett, seriously, that's not what this is about. So. Uh, yeah. Part of Part of that is, by the way, the editing. Edit, there, you People do not know, unless you've done uh, any sort of film stuff, the power in editing. You can do oh, so sure. much. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, my Lord. Even the freaking green button shot in the uh, in the movie, which the director asked me if it was okay, if he could take a jab at me. How simple was that? Which was, he just lucked out, which was as Patricia and I were leaving the scene, his camera was focused on the green button. And then all of a sudden, somebody in editing goes, what if we just have Mark not hit that button? Why if we just cut that part out? It'll make Mark look like he missed something really, really obvious. Therefore, the globe must be obvious and Mark missed it. And it was like, oh, yeah, it's brilliant. Really, really great. And it's like, all right, fine. Take your shot. And uh, yeah, which is fine. It's good. That's awesome. Well, uh, for those of you just joining us, we got Mark Sargent with us, and yes. uh, we're going to be answering some questions about the flat earth. I think, uh, you know, it's, it's become a huge thing just recently, uh, in my opinion. Um, I, I know that you've been involved in it for a few more years, but, um, I, you know, it just started blowing up on my social media kind of out of nowhere, I noticed. Right. And so um, that's kind of why I wanted to do the Conspiracy Theory Thursday on the flat earth, um, just because I think, you know, people people were experiencing the same thing and had a lot of questions about yeah. what, what it really means and right. uh, where does it come from and all, is it true? You know, so, um, you know, I want to start tonight, though, with how we usually start, and that's scripturally. Mark, I don't know uh, if you're a religious person, but we... we are I Christian. am a religious person. You go awesome. right ahead. Yeah, so we, we start yeah. every week with Psalm chapter 2, and I actually... I uh, am a heathen and didn't bring my Bible with me, so uh, <laughs> I'm going to do it off of off of memory and probably paraphrase it. But Psalm chapter two talks about conspiracy, and it starts with 
Um, why do the nations rage and the kings plot and conspire against the Lord and against his anointed, saying um, all these evil things, devising these evil plans? And so, um, you know, tonight and every Thursday is dedicated to getting truth out to you guys is to talk about these conspiracies, talk about these fringe topics that don't that the church doesn't seem to want to talk about. And so we want to discuss these things with you guys and uh, let you ask us questions. We like to bring on people that are that are more uh, that are, uh, you know, um, they've done a lot of research and they know what they're talking about. So that's why we brought Mark on and. Uh, uh, we, we hope that we can answer some of your guys' questions. So make sure that you guys are sending in questions because we got a pro here, guys. We got a pro. <laughs> we, already, so. we already have a couple of questions. Oh, um, I'm sure. I want to, I want to say my question first. Okay. All right. So, um, I guess my first question for you would be, when did you become enlightened to your view of the, shape of the earth yeah um and like when did that come about that you felt like you were fully convinced that the earth was flat okay i first looked into it and and anyone that knows me knows the story and part of it is in the documentary um which is i first looked into it in 2014 because i'm older and i thought i had one point i'd finished the internet when it came to conspiracies i thought i'd pretty much seen it all Every conspiracy you can think of, I don't, I won't, won't rattle them off here. But if you can think of it, I had an opinion on it. And flat Earth, I thought, okay, it's terrible, it's awful. But you know what? It's on my bucket list. I might as well look at it, get it out of the way. Fine, I can actually say that. Oh yeah, I know something about flat Earth. Yeah. So I spent a weekend and I tried to shut the the thing down. And nine months later. I'm literally breaking a keyboard over my forehead going, there is no way, there is no way, there is no way, because I couldn't prove the globe in a court of law anymore. And what I try to tell people is I, I, I consider myself a clever problem solver, and I try to treat things kind of like a court case. And if the world is a court case, could I prove the flat earth to you right now? No, of course not. If I, if I could, I'd be on the cover of every magazine that there is. Yeah. Do people still buy magazines? I'm old. Hey, I do. I do. I totally oh, good, do. good. There's, there's, there's okay. it's great. Not so, what, what do you buy? Us, Us Weekly, Tiger Beat, something. No, like... I just like more like tonight. We went to go eat at a local restaurant here in town, and um, they have like those magazines that are like things around town. The yeah. Alibi. It's like a local. Right. One. I'm always about like looking through them. So I'm one that still likes some paper. So got it. So I tried to. Could could I prove? Can I prove to you the flat Earth right now? No, I cannot. I, however, I can create so much reasonable doubt in the globe that there is nowhere else for you to go except for some sort of flat earth model. And that is how just about everybody that gets into this, the t-shirt literally reads, I became a flat earther because I tried to disprove it. And that's how everybody hates it. Everybody hates it. And so, yeah, nine months. So in the beginning of 2015, I woke up, if you've ever seen the movie, Jerry Maguire, I woke up with that Jerry Maguire moment. I said, you know what? I'm going to do something completely nuts. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to build a series of videos and put it out to the internet hive mind and, I, and say, okay, I can't solve this myself. Internet, you're really smart. Help me out here. And I put this, I put the videos out one every day. I did the first seven and eight days. Yeah. And when I was done, I'm just holding my breath and I put my phone number, which is super smart to do and my address and my real name and all this. I, I encourage everybody to do that. That's such a great thing to do. Yeah. And when I did it, I was waiting for some academic to call me up and shut me down. And instead, the opposite happened where there were people just people just calling me out of the blue saying, wow, man, this is really interesting. And then people wanted to interview me, podcasts I've never heard of before. Big, big groups were starting to call me and it started scaling up. And then I had subject matter experts calling me, uh, members of the armed forces, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, pilots, engineers, air traffic controllers, people that specialize in transportation. They're all contacting me out of the blue because my phone number's out there. And they said, you know what? You may be onto something. And I'm going, <laughs> I don't want to hear that. I want to, I want you to shut me down. It's like, no, man, no, there's something going on here. I'm going, really? And that was it. And then after about the first three or four months, I said, okay, uh, I'm going for broke. Well, let's, let's just, yeah. just keep this thing going. And that's when, you know, later in 2015 is when Patricia and I finally started doing our thing. And then Jaronism and Globusters and, and just about everybody you saw in the documentary, we were scattered all over the place, uh, but we started getting together. And then, um, sorry, uh, to continue on really quick, because you, you got into it because of the documentary mostly, right? 
you had heard about it. Yeah. Well, like I said earlier, um, and I kind of discussed this last week, I, I saw it in my social media, just like people that I've been following and, you know, these big conspiracy people as well, you know, right. like you said, they, they've researched every conspiracy there is. Yeah. Um, I think that like you, we've talked about this before, like, like when we first got married, but I think it was kind of maybe at the, the last like priority list it yeah. wasn't something that was like right. yeah okay is killery eating little baby children it was <laughs> you know it was <laughs> so. yeah yeah and so i just um i saw that and so i was just i started to do some more research i started asking some of these people you know um that you know to give me sources books articles things like that and i uh ended up talking to one of my friends who said that your your documentary came out on Netflix and I was like oh my gosh okay well and so we watched it and that was really like the first time that we saw the the vastness of the um of the community you yeah know, like the... I didn't even know there's like convention there oh, yeah 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 I learned so much it, yeah. it, it really ramped up at the beginning of 2016 when we thought it was just gonna go kind of organically uh, that's when uh, rapper bob, made that song called Flatline against Neil deGrasse Tyson. And all Neil had to do was shut up. It's, he didn't have to respond. But no, no, Neil goes on Comedy Central and drops the mic and does this this yeah. whole montage of going, what What are you doing? You don't have yeah. to respond. Um, and then um, uh, that carried mostly through 2016. And then 2017, Kyrie Irving did his thing. Uh, you know, the basketball player that plays for, for the Cavaliers when he was playing with LeBron. And the LeBron is like, oh, yeah, what everything's totally great with me. It's like, oh, my God, do you know how much marketing that is? I mean, we couldn't yeah. we couldn't we could give LeBron a briefcase of money and he wouldn't have done that for us. He did it for yeah. free. Yeah. Uh, and that carried us through most of 2017. Then Mad Mike with his rocket thing at the beginning of 2018. But but yeah, we we decided to do a conference in 2017. And this year we have conferences in. Oh, my God. Uh, let's see. New Zealand in three weeks. Calgary. Stockholm, UK, Mount Shasta, California, of all places, Amsterdam, and Dallas. Wow. That I still have to do this year. We already did LA uh, just a little while ago. So yeah, uh, it's oh. it's freaking and and I but sorry, I have to I have to butt in real quick, which okay. is until the the documentary had gone through the film festival thing in 2018 and was released in November on iTunes and Amazon and, and YouTube movies and stuff. I had no idea that that everybody owned netflix except me everybody's got netflix and so when it came out on netflix everything just exploded and yeah. it's like why it's like oh because apparently everybody by default owns netflix yeah right. matter of fact, we actually don't even pay for like um like any kind of dish or like cable tv we only have prime and um netflix, netflix. yeah between yeah. those two between <laughs> amazon prime and netflix there's so much yeah. content Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah, so. and we watch the same things. We watch Friends over and over again. So it's like <laughs> unless we find a good documentary that we want to watch, then we yeah. watch that. But yeah, well, they, I, I, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. I have a good question. Um, from what I've seen, and I think your story is actually different. What I've seen is that most people who uh, believe in a flat Earth start with the biblical cosmology. Is that where you began? Um. Yes. Yes. So I, my story, I, and I didn't talk about this in the movie. Well, I actually, I did, but they edited it out. You got to remember the, the film team that covered this did not want to go into the biblical side at all. They mm -hmm. definitely didn't want to show, and they did not a sliver. I mean, anyone that was in, into biblical conspiracies and biblical prophecies, uh, like they were the only reason they even showed Robbie Davidson, for example, who's a super, yeah. super strong Christian is because he ran the conference. Oh, and yeah. so they, otherwise they would have cut him out because they wanted to keep the biblical, biblical thing out of it. So they kept Rob Skiba out um, and all the other guys. I don't want to go. We don't have time to go into all of them. Um, but yeah, so I was raised a born again Christian where su uh, church doesn't what wasn't just a Sunday thing. You know, we had youth group and vacation Bible school and Camp Malibu and all this stuff. And, awesome. and I grew up on a, on a sheltered island up in the Northwest. And then when I went to university, he was like, wait, there's more than one religion? I had no idea. I was so naive about everything when I when I first got out into the world. And then I got into tech, which was really bad. Because then you just fall yeah. away entirely. It's like, church, yeah. who needs that? 
Give me the latest tech gadgets. I love it. And that's what I did for the longest time. Uh, and then when I got into this, it snapped me right back into spirituality. And I've heard this time and time and time again from people. In fact, I've heard so many people in the, in the hardcore Christian side of Flat Earth that said, we've never seen a recruiting tool like this, ever. In fact, I just did a, a Christian radio station uh, a couple hours ago. And they said, oh, yeah, it's, it's – it, in fact, not only do we have Flat Earth conferences, there are dedicated Christian Flat Earth conferences on wow. top of – yeah, that's, that's how big it is. So, sorry, I don't know if that was your question, but yes, yeah. it, by default – and the reason is it's because if it was built, if the default shape is a snow globe – we'll just use snow globe, right, because that's easy yeah. to understand yeah. – then it's not organic, right? That means it was built by someone. That means it was created – means there's some sort of creator at that right. point you've only got two choices which is an advanced civilization that's much older than ourselves or the divine take your pick by that point you're kind of splitting hairs and so as some people have said that flat earth will eventually kill atheism altogether and it's like well maybe not kill it entirely but make it a endangered species to be to be sure interesting sorry, go ahead. sorry i well, rambled that's fascinating and mm -hmm. and so um you're talking about these conferences. What what would one expect at these conferences? What is the point of the conference? Bedlam. Than, Bedlam. Than it's just chaos. No, here's <laughs> here's why the the conferences, the meetups, the regional meetups, and we've had hundreds of those things. I'm, I'm, in fact, I've got to make three more promos tomorrow. Um, the reason why the conferences do as well as they do is because ninety percent of the flat Earth membership are still in the closet. Mean and I mean I I've got people in in my family extended family like cousins who well, I was like yeah dude I'm totally into this I'm not telling I'm I'm not discussing it with my spouse I'm not talking about it with my uh, friends or my coworkers because they're scared it, and I mean heck I've talked to celebrities celebrities you would know and who say yeah we're not coming out yet because uh, we saw what happened with Kyrie. I mean, you got to remember, Kyrie has to go into the locker room after every freaking game, and the reporters have that in their back pocket now. Oh, so yeah. if they don't care, it's like, fine, you shot 10 points this evening. Let's talk about Flat Earth. Right. Gonna get so tired of that. Yeah. Um, it's but almost, when you we're, It's almost like us, like when um, we first decided not to vaccinate our children, yeah. we were like, okay, are we like ready to brave all of our friends and family who are going to like ostracize us? Yeah. But we're, yeah. now we're at a like we just had our second one seven months ago and, and now we're like eh, we don't really care what you think this is our stance this is what we've researched this is what we believe you, you either love us or you don't like right, good yeah. you. absolutely good for you yeah. um, sorry I, short answer though to your to why what to expect the conference because of all that peer pressure people go to these conferences to be around like-minded people uh, so it's kind of like, it's sound bad, but it's kind of like a happy AA meeting yeah. when you go there. Yeah. It's like, everyone's like, Hey, my name's Mark. Hey, three years now first started, you know, and then you tell your story and, and people get so amped up because you realize you're not going to be judged yeah. by anybody there that nobody sleeps. I mean, like the Raleigh conference, babe, there was so much they edited out. I mean, nobody slept for four days. They were just so excited about, about <laughs> being there with people. We get kicked out of restaurants on a regular basis because nobody wants to shut down. Yeah. They, yeah. I, mean, I mean, you could probably hear it with me. I mean, you remember, I've been doing this now for a while, and I still get pumped up. Yeah. Um, okay. I, and that, this leads, oh, it doesn't lead into my next question, but I do have another question, and it's um, why is it important to, to study the shape of the earth? What is... I mean, because you've dedicated your mm -hmm. your life now to this, right? right? I mean, this is what you pretty this much. This is what do. I do. Why is why is that so important? Why is it, especially as a Christian or something? Why would you say that it's so important to know and to study these kinds of things? Okay, the reason why, and that's kind of a version of one out of every ten people ask me, why should I care? If the earth is flat or not, for example, it's like, you know, my spouse hates me and my kids don't listen to me and I got to go to my terrible job in the morning. Uh, why do I even care if it's flat? And it's like, well, <laughs> here's the thing. It's because it changes everything around you. It's, it's kind of like it until you believe it, you don't care. It's kind of like telling somebody that when they're 30 that they're adopted. And, you know, when you, if you try to, if I say, Hey, you know what? I think you're adopted, right? You're being like, whatever, get out of here. You're just going to blow me off and blow me off. The right. second you start believing it though, 
all of a sudden there's these ripples that go back in time all the way to when you're six years old. It's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. What if I was adopted? Wait, who were those people? I, I, I was was I in a basket, you know? And then all of a sudden, your just mind is just spinning. So, if you can get into flat Earth, if you can get your head around it, even briefly, it opens up your mind to a lot of things. A lot of things. First off, you'll revisit every conspiracy you've ever looked at ever in your life. But yeah. the other thing is, all of a sudden, you become. And this is going to sound like a kumbaya type thing, but you become significant. Meaning up until now, remember, you were taught you were on this little rock that's covered with a thin shell of water, which is surrounded by a thin veil of smoke that's going through an endless universe. And you're absolutely accidental and you mean nothing. You have no purpose in this universe whatsoever. You are just whatever science tells you are. But if it's an enclosed world, God's footstool, whatever you want to call it then you it was very deliberate and you were put here for a very specific reason and the entire structure was built for you you yeah. have meaning and that f overcomes people i mean i'm not kidding you. there's a lot of individuals that i've met that's like you know what i didn't i didn't even think about the bible until yeah. i got into flat earth and it's like now it's like i'm looking for bibles if there was a great one a video i just watched today where like the guy freaked out immediately called up his friend it's like hey man you work at a hotel right it's like yeah do they the gideon still put things in the in the bibles and the in the next to the, in the in the he goes yeah can i have one i'm going to drive down right now and he did he went, went uh -huh. down and got one he started getting into it so it's like oh, awesome. not i could i can't exaggerate it it is a spiritual tool more than anything uh and and i'm not trying to make science scared but that's the other thing, which is why should – because National Geographic, they asked me questions that I'd never heard before, which was what happens to medicine? What happens to technology? What happens to civilization as we know it? Aren't you saying that we this could lead us into the new dark ages? I'm going, I don't, I don't know if you should be that heavy, man. I, I don't think it's that bad. But yeah. it, besides, we haven't had any incidents. I mean, we there's happy songs. Look, look like uh, – type in like Flat Earth music or Flat Earth song. I've got a playlist on my YouTube channel. It's like 300 tracks. Oh my and, it's, God. and they're all happy. Find me a happy song about JFK. You're not going to find one. Right. That's, yeah. You know, yeah. no one's no one with a banjo is going, oh, JFK shot in the head. Dun, 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 dun. You know, it's, you're not going to hear that. But flat earth, people just, it just opens their minds up. Sorry, I get, I get pumped. You got to stop no, me. I, no, I love, we love it. it. Yeah. yeah. We, we, we are, uh, both Seth and I, when we're passionate about something, we can just go on and on. Oh about man, you have no idea. It so much, but so. it's interesting. And you're, you're hitting my buttons here, Mark, because, um, I'm a conspiracy theory nut as well. Um, not, not you know, based off of feelings or emotions, but on recorded, you know, documented paper trails. Um, and you mentioned that, that, you know, believing in a flat earth kind of makes you rethink all these conspiracies. So the first one that comes to mind, in my opinion, and I'm sure you've done a, uh, some research into this, is the hollow earth, which was propagated by Hitler, the Nazis, the Aryan right. race, you know, Shambhala, there was this paradise within the earth. So how, how, what was the correlation between or the lack of correlation that, you know, came or why did they think that the earth was hollow as opposed to flat? OK, this is going to freak you out because I know you haven't really looked into this. So much. I got into flat earth because of hollow earth. That's how I started down this path. I was looking, I was revisiting a lot of old, like you're going through old television shows, right? And like going through old conspiracies, like, oh, what's happening in the Hollow Earth thing? Oh, yeah, Mount Shasta, blah, blah, blah. And then I look uh -oh. at that bird, 1926, and what, are we still, we're still good? Yeah, you just pause for a sec. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Um, so Admiral Byrd goes up to the North Pole in 1926, and that's where yeah. most of the Hollow Earth story stems right. from, is Admiral Byrd in 1926. And then all of a sudden I realized that he left the North Pole in 1926, and the government sent him straight to the South Pole in 1928, well, Antarctica, and he spent basically the rest of his life in Antarctica flying around looking for something yeah. in the South Pole. Um, the Hollow Earth, though, I don't think... It is, it is, uh, everything else, everything dovetails pretty well into flat earth, including the hollow earth. Here's why most of our civilization. And I mean like 90 something percent of our civilization lives between sea level and one mile up, you mm -hmm. know, sea level in about 5,000 feet. That's almost, yeah, I know we you live, guys are way up there. We live, yep. We're, we're, yeah, we're uh, mile high. We're mile high here. <laughs> nice. Well, yeah, I, I was in Colorado for 20 years. I, I'm very accustomed to it. So, uh, we, so if, if that's the case, 
then a hollow earth doesn't have to be a big hollow sphere. It could just be a cave. I mean, technically, you got to remember airlines, commercial airlines cap out at about 10 miles, spy planes, 20 miles. And, you know, if you had a cave that was only 100 miles high, you could put a civilization in there in two seconds. As a matter of fact, who's to say that if we're in some sort of snow globe that we're not in some sort of hollow earth situation already? So yeah. hollow earth has no problem with flat earth right. whatsoever. As a matter yeah. of fact, but the Admiral Byrd connection is fantastic. I encourage anyone to look up Admiral yep. Byrd. Yep. You will just be stunned. Operation High Jump. Um, Operation High Jump. Yeah, yeah. That was the other thing. It's like everybody else left the exploration of Antarctica during World War II because uh, it was World War II, right? Except for one nation. The Germans. The Germans. <laughs> Of course, the Germans. Why not? It, the, people think that Indiana Jones is just a movie. It is not just a movie. Oh, they would have done. They, I was telling her that. <laughs> they absolutely. I mean, if if they could have seriously, if somebody told them that Harry Potter's wand was in the Appalachian Mountains, they would send paratroopers there, and they would look for the Ring of Power. They would find freaking uh, Gollum. They would look at anything that was magical. They didn't care. It was like, look, we will win the war at all costs. We don't care what, what it takes. And so if there was something spooky in Antarctica, you bet they're going to go look for it. And so then Admiral Byrd, the second after he signs the uh, the Japanese surrender, he sends a full-blown carrier fleet with, with ground troops down to Antarctica. And we never knew exactly what happens, but the stories are just wild. You know, it's like that they fought something. I love the story. Sorry, I'll end on this, which is I love the story where – the Nazis actually met an advanced civilization at the edge of Antarctica, you know, way inland. And it turned into like a like a high school dance scenario where they asked them for asylum. And the the, the advanced advanced uh, civilization said, all right, fine, you can go with us, but you can't come back in. You know, once you leave the gymnasium, that's it. You are you are stuck here with us and you can't go back in and like get your revenge later. You know, that's not that's not how it works. And so that's that's why I like. But yeah, Antarctica, super, super mysterious place. Yeah, it is. And it's uh, it's even more mysterious because the government has now um, there's like treaties and everything restricting people from exploring. I know Logan Paul has come out and said that he's um, trying to put together an expedition to Antarctica. Oh, OK, OK. Can I can I address the Trollgan Paul thing? Yes. And yes, I did pronounce his name Trollgan Paul because I knew full well. So the Denver conference last year, he decided he was going to come down and punk us. But the problem was, is that is his... That real quick, just for clarification, is this the guy you have issues with in the documentary? No. No. Oh, that, yeah. no that's, that's, that's Matt Boylan. That's one of our own. That's Matt Boylan. He's been around for a long time. Uh, but no, I, I, don't, I don't even have problems with Matt. Matt's just... <laughs> Matt's just Oh, he's just excited. Hey, are you seeing? Are you seeing that I pick up on all the emotional things? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Matt. Matt was Matt was made the villain for the documentary because every science person in that documentary was very affable. They were the smile for the camera and say, "Yeah, well, they're just misinformed, misunderstood." You know, they wouldn't get. But you know, for a villain, you need someone to to get angry and you need someone to be sinister. And so it's like, who do we got? Well, we got Matt Boylan, and he's a flat earther. So, and he hates everybody. He's like Mikey in the the cereal commercial. So, no, no, Logan Paul, who I loathe so much. He, I, I, the problem was is that his demographic skews so young that when he showed up at the conference, nobody knew who he was, except me, because I knew through his brother. You know, I didn't. I've done. I've absorb. I absorb all media. So I knew his brother. I'm going. He can't be here. There's no way. Why Why are you guys letting him here? And I said, look, <laughs> I can't be here. You do not want to be around when his cameras are running. Yeah. He's, he's, he, the guy has never made a serious piece in his life. And so I left. I literally just left the conference and flew home. And people were mad and, and, and all that. I'm going, look, he is going to punk you. You wait. It's going to happen. And he did. He made this hour-long thing, which I you may or may not have watched, and it was terrible. Uh, but yeah, L Logan, wait, oh, no, I'm sorry. So he was back to the cruise thing. So he was mistakenly because media is just so lazy and they steal from each other. Mm -hmm. it, somewhere along the line, it got confused because uh, the 2020 conference, the American conference is going to be out of Miami and it's going to be a pleasure boat cruise, right? So some journalist says, well, maybe they should look for the end of the earth. Dar -her. It's like, okay, that's fine, but uh, we're not going, you know, you know, there's no Antarctic cruise that leaves from Miami, one. Uh, and then somebody, then then Logan mentions it just in passing that he'd like to go to Antarctica. The next thing you know, he's going on our cruise to Antarctica with us. No, 
No, he he does not believe in flat Earth. The man cannot does the man can't even spell Antarctica. Come on, <laughs> he doesn't know anything. He is one of the dumbest celebrities I have ever ever had the chance to run into. Terrible. That's, Sorry, My, that, I'm not going to hold back when it comes to that kid. That's mother. So the no, you're fine. We love uh, what, something that Seth and I value is transparency. Yeah. We believe um, to be our authentic selves. We we just live uh, with transparent lives. So we we commend that in uh, with you. And yeah. you're good. You're good. You can yeah. say whatever. Feel free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no censorship here. Hopefully. Yeah. Um, so I have a question that's come up. Um, so. If you, so you obviously are believing, you know, the earth is flat. Right. Do you believe, like, what do you believe about the other um, planets in our galaxy? Okay. First, I've got to mention, because when you talk, you use your hands, loving the nail polish, very festive, like that. <laughs> like you. that a lot. That is, that's some flashy stuff there. That is tough to yes. miss. <laughs> that, that is good. That is good stuff. Okay, uh, when it comes to the other planets, what we're talking about here, let me, let me break it down for you. What we're talking about here is you are living in a building with walls and a floor and a ceiling, no different than a planetarium, a terrarium, a soundstage, uh, you know, a Hollywood, a Hollywood backlight, you know, you, which I said in the thing. And, that, and that, that, by that, I mean very, very literally. So whatever is on the ceiling... The lights that are up in the sky, that's all they are, pretty little lights. So the planets and the stars, they're just part of a giant display system, which we've been doing in planetariums since the 1970s. I know that dates me. I'm old. You guys don't go to planetariums because they're not cool anymore. <laughs> but they're, they're they're real. And people, seriously, people used to like shut them down on weekends. You ever heard of things like Laser Floyd and Laser Led Zeppelin? Does that mean anything yeah. to you? Probably yeah. not. Yeah, she's going. <laughs> when I so but that's what we used to do and but that's that's a technology that's old technology you gotta remember we've only had hd tvs for about 20 years and not even in 20 years ago they weren't even very good so imagine that, what you could that, do seth, seth mentions the other day he's like do you realize that we haven't even had the internet on our phone like that long and i was like no my mind was blown i was like holy crap that's so true like we've advanced like that oh yeah, yeah. it is it has gone exponentially to where i mean Granted, I'm a little older, but come on. I, I, I mean, I can remember very clearly. I mean, I was one when I was in university, for example, I was one of the first kids that even had a computer at his house. And there was no internet to hook up to. It was just running <laughs> off the hard drive. We were just using it for word processing. Right. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so I'm sorry. So the planets and the stars are just lights in the sky. The sun and the moon are giant lights in the sky. Uh, I won't go into the biblical thing, you know, other than, you know, to one to rule the day, the other to, to rule the night. Right. Um, but they're just a part of a giant clock system. The The sun here, two quick examples. The sun is like an incandescent light bulb, like this thing over here. Uh, the moon is like an LED bulb, but it generates a cold light. If your listeners ever want to look into something cool, look up moonlight is cold. And by that, I mean... It generates uh, something in university we can do now. Uh, everyone knows a laser you know, can burn things. We can, we, if you change the frequency on a laser, you can cool things. You can cool things down. And you say, okay, what does that mean? Okay, uh, we're in the sunlight real quick. Uh, it's 90 degrees in the sun. It's 80 degrees in the shade, right? But if you're in the moonlight, it's the exact opposite. So if it's 50 degrees in the moonlight, it's 60 degrees in the moon shade. You're going, wait, that can't be possible. It can't be warmer in the moon shade. It can't be cold in the moonlight. It absolutely is up to 13 degrees. You can go out to a hardware store, buy one of those point and click infrared thermometers that you ch have cats chase. And you can test this yourself. Uh, and it costs like 20 bucks. And you, you can find it when the moon's high in the sky. So the question is, why does the moon, why is the moon generating a cold light? You say, does that prove a flat earth? No, it does not. But it absolutely blows away the relationship between the sun and the moon because the moon's supposedly reflecting the sun's light. It should at the very least be uh, neutral. It should not be negative. And it's it's the exact opposite. It's negative. Interesting. So correct me if I'm wrong. You you believe that our like government or the powers of be have like put these lights in the sky. No, God. No, 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 no. We, okay. okay. No, no. That's a good question though. No, you'd be amazed how many people ask me that. No, yeah, human beings have nothing to do with the building of this place. This place was built by something or someone, and I, I'm going to be fair to the people that are agnostic out there, built by something that is so old and so powerful that this place is small by comparison. It may be giant to us, but it is small to whoever built it. Interesting. Um, so the only thing we did, only thing we did, was keep the secret. That's the only thing we did. We figured it out in 1960. It's like, 
Oh, man. You look around. It's like, should we tell people? It's like, are you nuts? Do you know what might happen? And if you have that question, that's fine. And it's like, no, no, no. We got to keep this thing under wraps for as long as possible. It turns out it's about 50, 60 years. Wow. Um, so that kind of leads into my next question about solar and lunar eclipses. Yeah. How, how do you... Uh, what how do you explain those what what is that oh What's no it's a good question okay first off again uh, the the short answer is they are no different than what we do in a planetarium remember in a planet i know you guys haven't been to one but a planetarium <laughs> you can create waxing and waning crescents and the lunar eclipse you can create a blood moon it's easy you just say shade the moon red it's not hard it's software in fact back in the day it wasn't even software but what's more interesting is in fact, it's two of my points that I throw at people. I say, okay, let's let's look at the lunar eclipse first. Can remember there was a big one in the United States uh, a couple of years ago, the great yeah. the great eclipse, which was in the documentary. And what's interesting is the blackout zone was only seventy miles wide. You mean you had to be in a seventy mile wide zone to get the total eclipse, right? And you're going, okay, what does that mean? I'm going, well, the moon is two thousand miles wide. So why is the blackout zone only seventy miles wide? Why is it so tiny? When, when flat earthers say that the moon is only 50 miles wide to begin with, which makes sense. Because if if the it's 2,000 going down to 70, that's like you walking on a sunlit day, walking next to a wall, and your shadow goes down to the size of an action figure. It doesn't happen in real life. And you're saying, well, yeah, but science says that it convexes in and it acts like a condensing thing. It's like, yeah. But if that's the case, then when the moon is on the other side of the earth, so when you get a blood moon, the brother's sun supposedly then that blackout zone because the earth is 8,000 miles wide should be four times as wide we should see a 250 mile blackout zone on the moon we never ever see it all we see is a blood red moon you see that nice crescent go over it and you just see it turn red that's it it's like it shouldn't look red in fact it should be red with a giant black eyeball in the center of it we never ever see it and then science never explains it how's that hmm. uh -huh. Gosh, i know i talk fast and i'm throwing a lot of stuff at you no, it's no, all right. I'm just so excited because I'm like, gosh, I'm going to go back and watch this. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, and, and that's what we love about this is it's it gives a starting point for people to go and start to do their own research. And that's the whole point that we do yes. this because, mm -hmm. you know, we're not going to convince someone in these 30 to 45 minutes that no. we talk about these things. But we want to give people a starting point <laughs> to go look up these topics that, you know, could affect your your life. <laughs> and, and, and World and, and, but by the way, to your point, that is something that I say, usually I save it for the end, but I'll tell you guys now, which is, look, I am not here to convince you. I am not here to persuade you. All I'm here to do is plant the seed and say, you know what? Don't believe anything I say. You know, do your own research. Don't don't take my word for it. Yeah, look I for yourself that. and figure it out. That's what everyone I go. I go, look, in fact, I in fact, I go the opposite way. I'll use reverse psychology. I go, you know what? If you like your life the way it is. You use the men in black line. If you, you get a good bead on things. Things are great. You get up in the morning. It's like, hey, everything is awesome. Don't look into flat earth. Don't <laughs> do it. Because well, if, it's funny. We tell people the same thing about vaccines. We're like, if you like are okay with just like settling and the medical being, system, and not general. yeah, if you're just okay like trusting the medical system, then by all means, like that's okay. But we're we're gonna remain like open and remain like constantly researching because we do we date we take pride we don't want to convince anybody of anything what we want to convince people of is that they are like they're in charge of their own like yeah. awakening you right. know and if they really want to have control they have to do the research right and yeah. i like I like how so I heard it one time say that like if I think it was Greg Laurie actually he he said if someone can argue your their you know your way to a belief someone can argue yourself out yes, of it it's absolutely. not until you are convicted mm -hmm. and that you actually like have that that core belief established yeah. that it's going to make a difference you know and a life changing difference so yeah. yeah i i absolutely agree with you and by the way i'm i am on the same page with you with the whole vax thing I get that yeah. question every once in a while. And the argument I, I'll give you the short version real fast is because people will say, well, how can you believe this? I'm going, look, and I don't want to get into the dark stuff because you're, or, you know, the dark stuff. I go, look, the people, the, the American people, the mob, I'll call them the mob. They want an answer, right? It's like it, it, we're talking about something that's so widespread that unless it's remember, food is regional, water is regional, air is regional. And if it's not one of those three things, it's got to be something else. You got to. Yeah. They got to go after somebody, yes. and that is the most likely candidate, plain yeah. and simple. 
Yeah, and I no. don't care if Big Pharma fights. It's like, look, you guys are the most likely. You know, the 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 television show for crimes. It's like, it's like I like this. You know, where you're looking at the suspects. It's like, oh yeah, I totally like this guy for this crime. Yeah, Big Pharma. I like them for this crime. Yep. So there you go. Yeah. Oh yeah. Gosh, we love that you're in that camp with us because sometimes we feel so alone. <laughs> no, God, no, no. You are definitely not alone. So many cool people along yeah, the way. Yeah, we have. So. so I know another um, question that we got uh, was about water. It was something about the water. Do you remember? Uh, oh, like how the water doesn't fall off the side of the uh, earth? <laughs> no, no, no that's, that's actually a good one because we have been seeing the images. you got to remember, not only are we told, this is the only conspiracy we debunk to children. Out of everything that's out there, we do not tell kids about 9-11 or JFK or Pearl Harbor or any of the, you know, the smaller ones. We, we put the globe in the classroom. So, but not only that, but we put the images offline. We all know it's the space waterfall. God help me. <laughs> the Thor, the Thor movie series did not help us at all because Asgard has those cosmic waterfalls. Right. Yeah. Like, oh no, not Asgard. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fine, but no, no, there is no, there is no cosmic waterfall because the, again, it's space reinforcements because they say, well, how, you know, how, why are we not off the edge and you're falling off into space and there's waterfall? It's like, who told you there was space exactly? Because if you're in a building, everything's self-contained. You don't know what's outside there. Who told you there was space? The same guys that said the Americans went to the moon, those guys, the United States military, those guys. <laughs> You can trust them because I can show you some Apollo images which have aged horribly over the last 50 years. They're yeah. terrible. Yeah. I mean, even people, come on. I have run into so many people that that uh, don't believe in flat earth that absolutely think the moon missions didn't happen. And I go, well, you're getting there. You're getting yeah. there. So no, no, I'm sorry. There, the water stays in because Antarctica is, if you're in a building, you're, it's like you're in a big lake. And you're in a lake inside a building. Well, how? why does water not come out of a lake? Because there's an edge all the way around. And yeah. the Antarctica is a very unusual continent because there's a 200-foot wall of ice, basically from the, the water up, and then it rises up to about 14,000 feet. Uh, and it's, it's it, at, the, at the shoreline, it's not exactly like Game of Thrones, but you might as well use that reference since this is the last season. And then at 14,000 feet, uh, you know, it's, that's really, really high. Remember, altitude sickness kicks in at about 7,000 feet. So, no, yeah. the water's not going anywhere. Yeah. That's, yeah. Sure. that's a good question. Not though. going anywhere. There is no yeah. cosmic waterfall. It's not Asgard. Right. Um, well, I, I, I think I don't, I'm not getting any more questions that I yeah, see. I so they're it. just mainly comments, and uh, I don't want to keep you too long. And I'm I have sorry. a exam tomorrow so i actually need to get a good night's sleep so i think we're gonna say bye we are but i would love to have another interview with, with you sometime sure. soon to <laughs> discuss more and um we well, usually try to keep these like shorter than we do Seth's interviews which kind of stinks because sometimes it just goes by so fast yeah yeah, so. we could talk all night about all everything. Night. So, uh, but yeah, well, no. Thank, thank you very much for having me and giving me the opportunity to talk to your people. Yeah. And uh, no, no, you guys really kind of inspired me. I don't. I I have to watch so many videos that when I saw your video, it's like, oh, uh, it's what was it, forty minutes or something? Like that. I was like, I don't want to watch that whole thing. <laughs> but I'm watching this. I'm going. You know what? I'm liking. You know, I'm liking the the back and forth between you guys, and I'm going. You know what? I like this. It's kind of a debate inside of a show. This is this is yeah. working for me. So I had to comment. Yeah, I, I had to. And no, no, and no, I am not your hero. No, <laughs> not your hero. No. Well, we yeah, we appreciate you getting in touch with us because uh, I think uh, people really enjoyed this, at least from they the really comments did. that I've been seeing. Cool. Yeah. So um, yeah, I'll be posting this video up on our YouTube channel. So I'll uh, go ahead and send you the link when it's ready and. Um, Right on. Yeah. And so, um, like we always say, and this blessing is for you too, is that um, we pray that God would bless you and that he keep you and that he shine his face upon you. Um, and we just thank you so much for living authentically and um, just displaying your beliefs and uh, where your heart is and how you yeah. got into this place. So we just pray that um, God would continue to bless you in all your endeavors. Thank you so much. That's, that's, that's one of the nicest send-offs. It is the <laughs> nicest send-off I've ever had. And I've done... Oh. So glad. Hundreds of these things. You're talking to one of the best women around, so. <laughs> he's, just, he's just saying that because he got a new computer for his birthday. Yeah, she bought an iMac today, so uh, nice. we're, actually, we're Skyping you off of that, yeah. which is looks amazing, by yeah, the way. 
<laughs> well, we hope that you have a great night and um, thank you so much again. So we're going to go ahead and stop our recording here with our followers okay. and um, we'll stop recording here as well. Yeah. There we go. Let's see. Hold on one second. Let's see. How do we stop? You can edit. Well, I can edit it. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Right. Oh, yeah. Stop. <laughs> All right. Cool, man. We'll have a good Mark, night. Mark, that we'll was so awesome. Oh, Thank no, you. no. Thanks, guys. No, seriously. I, I really, really appreciate it and uh, hope you got something out of it. And if again, if people have any questions, I'm mean, easy to find. All my stuff is easy to find. And uh, if they, if for whatever reason they can't even afford Behind the Curve, let them know. Let me know. And I, I'll, I've got a burned copy I can shoot off. Awesome. Okay, awesome. Sounds well, good, hopefully man. we can do another interview with you sometime yeah. in the future. Yeah. Cool. And we'll, we'll keep in touch with you. Okay. Thanks, guys. Take care, man. We'll talk to you soon.